Today is Sri Radhashtami. It's tomorrow in India. So we should fly out to India and have it, have it, do it twice. Do it every day. We have to speak on the topic of Shimati, Shimati Radharani, finding ourselves completely unqualified to do so. Yet if we are to be Gaudiyas, followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then this should be our ultimate topic of discussion. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada on Radhashtami, we have his lectures, some of the lectures available. He didn't speak much about Radha at all in the lectures. Every day he expounded the philosophy of the Absolute Truth, Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam, as found in Srimad Bhagavatam. And we don't find the name of Radha directly in Srimad Bhagavatam at all. Anaya Radhito Nunam Bhagavan Hari Rishvara. Her name is indicated. For that matter, we don't find Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Bhagavatam, but indicated. In other words, Krishna Vanam Tvishar Krishnam Sangam Pangastra Parshatam Yagyai Sankirtana Praya Yajanti Hi Sumedasaha. In this Kali Yuga, the avatar worships, uh, uh, is to be worshipped by the process of Sangita. He chants Hare Krishna. So who is that if not Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? So same thing. Anaya Radhita Nam Bhagavan Hari Rishva. Who is it? <laughs> well, there might be some who say it's Chandravali, but it's not. <clears throat> it's Radharani. Srila Prabhupada spoke philosophy. We should understand philosophy, the scientific knowledge of the absolute truth as given in Bhagavatam. But all that teachings of Bhagavatam culminates in the highest truth, the highest philosophy, which is love. One of the greatly misused words on this mundane plane. Love. Another misused word. God. Another misused word. Me. Who am I? I am, and then we identify in terms of our body, mind, senses, wife, children, home, etc. So... Going beyond all that, we have to come to Vrindavan. Abhi Pravachan Shuru Hoga, Ham Bad Medashan Karanga. Take Ah. What's the use of philosophy if it doesn't come to love? Uh, nowadays, philosophy, it, 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 you end up hating more than loving. The philosophies are made for division, not for bringing together. So Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam is harmonizing, bringing everyone together at the lotus feet of Krishna. But if we are to truly understand love, fully First, we have to understand we're not the body, we have nothing to do with this world, we're eternal servants of Krishna. Uh, then, if we're so fortunate, we can go to Vrindavan. Vrindavan mm. Ajarana, what is that? Uh, Radha Padankita Dham Jaranam Vrindavan. That's Definition of Vrindavan, the place which is marked by the lotus feet of Krishna, right? Well, at least in this song, Bhakti you know, Thakur says, marked by the lotus feet of Radha. <clears throat> One 
What is the nature of that love? Love is foolish, everyone knows. Anyone who's ever loved knows that it's foolish. It's only foolishness. You fall in love and then you're bound up for life. <laughs> so Radha's love is foolish, we can say. We can say. We can say, we can say any damn thing we like. Don't tell the feminists this one. We are promoting misogyny. You should love your lover. Uh, he embraced me. Make sure he got permission first. <coughs> Or he can kick me under his feet. Wait a minute. <laughs> he can make me broken hearted by not appearing before me in the court case. <laughs> I've come to take all his money. Yeah, it's a, he, Radharan directly says he's a lumpata, which means he's uh, in in. 21st century English that would be called him is called a misogynist. <laughs> or it'd just be called a normal male because he has so many girlfriends. So yeah, just normal, that's all. <clears throat> but I'll worship him under any conditions. So this is the foolishness that the feminists are releasing us from. Hatred. They promote hatred actually. Radharani promotes love. This is the definition of love. <clears throat> that even if, the lo even if there's no grounds to love him, you love him anyway. Even if not only are there are no grounds, but you should reject him, you love him anyway. We find that in mother-to-child relationships not generally between men and women. <clears> this <throat> elaborate topic, how the, the highest form of love is that of uh, the male-female relationship. So Radha is higher than Yashoda. Is that right? Who's going to say that? I don't think anyone in Vrindavan is going to say that. <laughs> Technically, we can say that the Shingara Ras is higher than the <coughs> Vatsalya Rasa. But uh, it's better not to even think of such things. That this is higher than that. Uh, when, you, when you get out to infinity and we are so infinitesimal, it's better not to even think of things like that. So what is this Ashla Shiva Padra tongue verse? What is what is the what what can we understand? What what do we understand from this? Krishna doesn't know. Therefore he comes as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Tries to understand. Who is this Krishna? Just cheating. Radharani all the time. Still she loves him. Uh, this Ashli Shiva verse has been uncovered and explained. How Krishna wants to understand this. This has been uncovered and explained in the form of a narration. Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur has given one small narration called Prema Samputa. Prema, you, we all know that word. <coughs> Knowing the word is one thing. Uh, that's the whole purpose of everything we're, we're supposed to be doing in Krishna consciousness. Samput means a 
decorated box in which you keep very precious jewels, not shown to everyone. Most people shouldn't even know that it exists because there are people, if you have very precious jewels, then people, bad people will want to come and take them from you. So you, you don't show them always and everywhere. Keep them very carefully. So this is the uh, narration of uh, Krishna cheating Radharani. One, one time, one narration of Krishna cheating Radha. But in a very special way. Generally when we think of Krishna cheating Radha, if we think of that at all, we think of him going with another gopi, saying he'll come to meet her, but not meeting her. But this is, this is in a different way, in which uh, Krishna uncovers from her heart <laughs> the jewels of love with it. And it's very pleasing to the heart to hear about this. I'll read a translation of this. It's composed in Sanskrit. <clears throat> and you can go back and read it yourself sometime because there are so many points in here. In the form of a story, it is a story. I mean, it's, not, it's not some novels that someone made up. This is reality. Uh, This is reality at the highest level of reality, which we crawling around as worms and bugs in this material world have somehow, by causeless mercy, been made privy to. So I'll, I'll read a translation of this. One morning, Hari came to Srimati Radharani's courtyard in the he was dressed, Krishna was dressed very beautifully as a woman. He sat down and although shyness is not a characteristic of Krishna, he's playing as a woman, so he shyly covers his face with the edge of his cloth, red. So Rishabhanu Nandini Radha sees him from a little, she's in the courtyard, but it's a big palace, so she sees him from a little distance. She doesn't see exactly who it is. And she points out to Lalita, oh, just see, how wonderful. Just see. Who is that beautiful lotus-faced girl? I don't know her. I know all the, I know all the girls in Vrindavan. Who is this girl? Whose dress and ornaments, uh, they're just so pleasing and... Uh, She's so bright and lustrous. She seems to light up this courtyard. Lalita and Vishaka couldn't answer. They didn't know either. So they came before Krishna, who's pretending not to be Krishna. He's cheating. No, I need a tissue. And said to her, O oh, slender girl, they're giving compliment. It's not a meaningless compliment. Who are you? Where are you from? Why have you come here? Can you imagine what Krishna said in reply? Any idea? Didn't say anything. So then Radha came up to Krishna. Hmm, thinking. I'd asked a great curiosity, who are you? You're so beautiful and lustrous, you're enchanting my mind. <laughs> are you a goddess from the heavenly worlds? You're so beautiful. What did Krishna say? Now you can guess. Nothing. Didn't say anything. So Radha continued. Uh, 
Very, you know, you're very beautiful. And you look like from a very good family. Please, you know, we're, we're curious to know. Tell us who you are. Take us as your friends. See, that's the heart of Radha. She immediately accepts as a friend. If someone comes, you don't know, in, in America today, if someone comes in your house, you don't know who they are, you'll come up with a gun. Who are you? Get out of here. In Britain they have signs, trespassers will be prosecuted. They don't, I don't see signs like in America. You'll just be shot, that's all. <laughs> yeah, shoot first, and then if they're still alive, ask questions afterwards. But Radharani is more civilized. She's asking questions. And taking as a friend. You must be your friend. You're holding your head low, but why should you be shy among us? Or afraid among us. What did Krishna say? And still didn't say anything, just breathed very deeply. When you breathe very deeply, if you're not running or doing exercise, then it's, it gives the idea that you're oh, feeling very sad. He or she uncovered his face a little bit, but didn't say anything. And Radharani said, Oh, beautiful girl, I can understand that you must have some pain in your heart. Otherwise, you couldn't be like this. Tell us, what's the problem? Trust me, fully trust me. I'll, tr I'll try to help you and remove your distress. And then the, the burning of your heart heartache, can only be extinguished by revealing your mind to a friend. So, what happened? Are, are you separated from your lover? Are you distressed by seeing faults in your lover? Are you afraid that you have offended him in some way? Maybe your enemies have gone and told bad things about you to him? Or maybe your husband is not very good and you're feeling some disgust in your mind and then you're becoming attached to some other man and you're feeling uh, distress at that or you become like me that happened to me, I know all about it, and my superiors chastise me harshly. I think that's the only reason you could be so sad. Oh, beautiful girl, do you have a co-wife who's loved more by your husband? She's very proud of her good fortune and speaks harshly to you, and pierces your heart with the arrows of her harsh words. No, that can't be possible because no one's more no one could be more beautiful than you, she says, Radharani says. Oh moon faced girl, from Mother Purnamasi I heard the story of Mohini. Who could enchant Lord Shiva except her? But I think when he was enchanted, you couldn't be enchanted, but when Krishna comes and looks at you, then you'll be bewildered. It will be very amusing to see how you enchant each other. Hearing this, Krishna made sure his whole body was covered so that Radharani couldn't see the goosebumps coming all over his body, the ecstasy of the <clears throat> romance. And Radha said, well, Oh my friend, are you suffering? Suffering from something? Uh, do you have pain in your body? Anywhere in your body? 
Vishaka, bring that oil. You know my father gave me that oil for treating pain. It, the oil which is the, the essence of my father's love for me. It cures all diseases. So let me rub this on the body and the head of this girl and that will take the pain away from her. Then she'll be able to speak with us. So Radharani got the oil and massaged Krishna. In the meantime, Krishna is showing that he's the greatest yogi by still being able to hold his disguise. <clears throat> and still pretending that he's a girl and he's distressed. Actually, he's in the greatest ecstasy, but he wants to find out something from Radha, which he knew this is the only way he could do it. So, we'll come to that. So Radha told her friends, I spoke sweetly to her, I massaged her with this oil very carefully and lovingly. But still, she just sits there saying nothing. Maybe she's a cheater. Hmm. Maybe she isn't in pain. Anyway, I'll try again. Let me bring that Danvantari gave us this special essence. And feed that to her. See if that will help her. I know what. We can bring that Krishna, that king of the Kunjas. If he can touch her breasts, then she'll call out. That'll make her, that'll make her say something. I'll, she'll, she'll amuse us by seeing, we'll see how she becomes lusty. Then Krishna hid the smile that came on his face with his veil and he, he pulled it over so Radha couldn't see. And Radha and her friends are becoming more and more astonished and drink it like Chakora birds who drink the that example is given because the Chakora only takes the rain, or the only water he drinks is the rain that falls from the sky before it hits the ground. So they, they can get very thirsty. So when they can drink water, that water is just like nectar for them. It's so rare and so, so, uh, so much wanted. So what Krishna said was like nectar, like, just like the rain that Chakoras experienced as Krishna began to speak in a woman's voice. Perfectly imitating. This is yoga maya. Otherwise, how can Krishna control himself in the presence of Radha? And how can Radha uh, not recognize Krishna? He said, uh, Krishna said, I am a goddess from the heavenly worlds. I came to you because I am very, very sad. Listen, oh beautiful face girl. I want to know something. Who else but you can help me? Shimati Radharani said, oh beautiful girl, you say you're a goddess? It can't be false. I can clearly see that you are one. You're so beautiful. There's no... Among humans, there's no one as beautiful as you. You can only be compared with yourself. You have a face like an autumn lotus. Are you separated from your husband? Don't feel offended. I'm not trying to make fun of you. I'm just wondering what's wrong. If you love me, then consider me yours and reveal your mind to me. <clears throat> So Krishna, he suddenly loves Radha and he considers himself Radha's. But for him to reveal his mind to Radha, very rare. 
So now in a pretending form he's going to reveal. So he says, Why do you doubt that I'm your friend? I am a goddess but I am yours. Believe me when I say that I want to be your maidservant. <coughs> Because I've tasted <coughs> a drop from the ocean of your love, your form, your qualities. Listen to me now very carefully. I have this intense pain in my heart which I want you to remove. You have to remove it. I'll tell you what it is. My dear friend, in the heavenly worlds, sometimes we hear <coughs> coming from Vrindavan the sound of a flute and it enters the heavenly world so powerfully that all the heavenly girls who got to heaven by doing so many pious activities so they can embrace their husbands and enjoy in the heavenly worlds, when they hear that flute, they lose all interest in embracing their husbands. And when they think about how they enjoyed with their husbands previously, they simply feel disgust. That flute sound, it's just like nectar, but it's like poison mixed with nectar. Because when it enters the ears of the heavenly women, the goddesses, it makes them <coughs> overwhelmed and they feel as if their body is on fire. And then their husbands who are embracing them said, what happened? And let go of them. All of a sudden, their wives' bodies became just like fire, so hot. Listen, my friend, Krishna continues. In the heavenly world, no one is older than anyone else because everyone gets born. When they're born, immediately they're grown up and everyone looks the same age and we don't count the years and so no one's old, no one's young. So who can chastise anyone else? There's no one to tell us what to do or set us on the right track. And everyone anyway, after hearing the flute, is in the same condition. No one can mock, you can't, ah, just look, just say they heard some flute sound from the earth and now they're bewildered. But no one can mock at you like, because everyone's in the same condition. That sound destroys the goddess's vows of chastity. When I heard this sound every day, I thought to myself, who makes that sound? Where does it come from? So I went down to see, came down to the earth, and I stayed at Vangshivata for some days. Vangshivata is the banyan tree where Krishna stands playing his flute at night with the intention of calling the gopis. So I stayed there, hiding for some days and seeing all your incomparable pastimes with Sri Hari. And just by seeing, I got to know who this is. These are his cowherd boyfriends. These are the go. He got to know about everything about them. So I know what you're doing. I came here as a, a spy. <laughs> to find out what's going on. Hearing this, Radharani said in, a, in her typical sweet voice, in a joking, joking tone, Oh, you're a very fortunate girl. You're the most intelligent girl in all of heaven. No one is more in intelligent than you. You must have the name Sumana. Sumana is a flower, or it means someone in a good state of mind. Although your mind is cut by the sword of eagerness, hearing these joking words of Radha, Krishna <coughs> smiled very sweetly, but said with slightly knotted eyebrows, that means looking a little angry also. Uh, tell, uh, oh, 
Radhe, I don't know anyone who is your equal in protecting me from any other man who might see me. Radha replied, Is there any need of any other man after you have enjoyed with Krishna? That's who you came for. Tell me what you want to ask me. I only joked with you because I considered you my my friend, girlfriend. Uh, I wasn't joking out of malice. Krishna said, Oh my dear friend, Saki, who can defeat you in joking? She knows because she's seen. Or he's pretending that he's seen. Uh, a few days you can understand that Radharani is undefeatable in joking. Oh Radhe, you are my friend. Although you are only a human being, all the goddesses want to purify themselves by singing your glories and bowing down to you. I'm not flattering you, so don't be shy. I'm not indifferent to you. I can never lie to you. Even Lakshmi and Parvati are nowhere near your equals in auspicious qualities. There is no girl in the three worlds or beyond them with so much love as you. So this is why Lakshmi and Parvati cannot be considered equal. Uh, so what, what is the qualification for a girl or for a man for that matter? But what is the qualification in Vrindavan? The greatness is understood. Not by knowledge, not by pious activities, not by austerities, it's by love. So Krishna, pretending to be a goddess from the heavenly world, say that no one is equal with you, even Lakshmi or Parvati, because your love is so much. No one ever has as much love as you. And even in their minds, these girls don't dare to challenge you. I, I know this, I heard this in Parvati's assembly on the peak of Mount Kailash. I heard it being discussed there. Hearing of your glories, I wanted to see you, but then I become upset. Unfortunately, my heart does not break of sorrow because it is so hard. Radha said, Oh, Saki, why are you upset? Tell me quickly. Krishna did not reply. He could not reply because his voice was choked with tears. So he's just said nothing as tears streamed from his eyes. And Radha personally wiped these eyes, these tears from his eyes with the edge of her sari. Krishna gathered his emotions, and then said, this is his question, this is what he wants to know. How did you develop this strong, causeless, incomparable love for this lusty boy, Krishna? Your love is glorious, but why are you loving him? How can you give yourself so much misery by trusting someone who's so untrust? The only thing Krishna can be trusted for is to break your trust. That's practically all. Okay, he's beautiful, he's powerful, he's heroic, he has incomparable fortune and fame. But all those qualities are spoiled by one fault. He doesn't care about others loving him. He's just lusty. Therefore, he's not fit to be taken shelter of. I've seen one day Krishna plays with you, so many things, as if he loves you, but it's all false. He takes you, you're just so innocent. He takes you off to a secluded place and then he leaves you and goes off to some other girl. And hearing your lamentations, all your girlfriends, they begin to cry. And all, even the vines and the birds, they all begin to cry. I've seen this. I was watching from Vangshivata. This 
That's why I feel so much pain in my heart. During the Rasa dance, Krishna left all the gopis to show special feelings toward you. But he just played with you for a while in the forest and then he suddenly left you alone all again. How can I forget that at that time you called out so loudly in pain, fainting from misery? Throughout my life, I'm traumatized. That will remain forever in my heart, hearing your calls of pain. I'm a goddess. You're a girl, famous girl. But we don't feel pain in the heavenly worlds. We don't feel pain, especially the girls. They never feel pain. But now, after seeing you, I feel so, uh, so hurt. It's like a spear has entered my heart, which I can't take out. I've become so attached to you. You are so good. I don't want to go back to heaven. I don't want to even hear about heaven. I don't want anything to do with that. Ah. <clears throat> But at the same time, I, I can't remain here. It's so painful. Vrindavan is the land of pain. My mind is spinning. I can't, I can't remain at ease. I was hidden. I just wanted to come and see. But now I, I've come to see you. After, after a long time, it seems to me like such a long time, I thought I had to come to reveal my heart to you. I'm so afraid of Krishna because he's, he has no piety, no shame. He, has, he never even thinks of anything like compassion. As a baby, he killed a woman, Putana. And then as a, just in his childhood, he killed a calf, Vatsasura. Then he was a little bigger, he killed a bull, Arishtasura. And you love him? That is giving me pain. Why you are so good, your heart is full of such love, such good quality. But why him? <laughs> Krishna wants to know. <laughs> He's assessed himself properly. <laughs> Radharani replied, O oh, beautiful girl, you have the same indescribable potency as Krishna. Although you, although you are criticizing him so much, my mind is still attached to you. I, in other words, I should reject you for saying such things. But still I feel very attached to you. You wonder why I am attached to Krishna. I'm wondering why I am attached to you. <laughs> You're my friend. Don't go back to heaven. Stay with me here in Raja. I have a treasure box of my love. I will open it and show you all the excellent jewels within it. Krishna said, Ah, you still don't trust me. Don't ask me to be your friend. I want to be your maidservant. Be pleased with me and order me. I swear, <laughs> I swear to you on the name of Lord Vishnu. <laughs> be pleased with me. I have no shelter other than you. Saki, Radharani says, if you want to understand my love for Krishna, then listen. Prem is so great that even the knowers of the Vedas cannot know it, nor others who claim to know it. Oh, my friend, one who teaches Prem to someone who is inquisitive to learn about it cannot know about it, nor can the hearer know about it. It's all in imitation. As long as you're trying to discriminate, 
Prem won't be there. And if you're indiscriminate, Prem won't be there. But when you're, when you're free from discrimination and indiscrimination in a pure heart, one has that divine greed. Then one can start to approach the throne of that natural, spontaneous love. How do we know that someone has that love? Then we have to see the lover's activities, which are only dedicated to the happiness of the beloved. Radharani gives an example. A lion eats elephants. He, the lions catch an elephant. So in the same way, Prem feeds itself. In other words, in this world there are so many miseries which are impossible to overcome. They're, they're huge and heavy like mountains. That's the, the, the nature of this world and the, the nature of the, the higher worlds. We get problems from all you demigods up there. You have problems from your families, from your loved ones, from, from enemies. We we have so many huge, big troubles. But Prem is so great that just like the, the lion overcomes the elephant, no one can overcome an elephant, but the lions eat elephants. So in the same way, this Prem is so powerful that not only overcomes the problems of this world, but feeds on it becomes in more nourished by it. The lion is proud. He's a very proud animal. He goes to sleep, unafraid. Others, the other animals may be afraid, but the lion in the forest can sleep very peacefully, not afraid of anyone or anything. <clears throat> So when the jackals bark in the forest, the lion is not disturbed. So in the same way, when there's so many problems in our life or so many bad things, someone who has prem in their heart, someone in whose heart that has arisen, they, uh, they don't... Uh, they're not disturbed. So many unfavorable things, they're not disturbed. Uh, another analogy, Prem, Radha says, is like a lamp shining in this darkness. Because of deceitfulness, in other words, Krishna, so what she, what's she getting at here? Krishna's deceitfulness feeds Radha's love. It's, it's fresh and intoxicating, gives joy to the three worlds, like the cool moon when Raja and Krishna are together. I feel, ah, so nice. And heat like the burning sun at the time of universal destruction, during the time of separation. Oh, my dear friend, Saki, who else in all the three worlds, or even beyond them, but in the Prince of the cowherds, Krishna, is such prem to be found. She doesn't say, I have it. She says it's in Krishna. Only the doe-eyed, that means Harinakshi, eyes like female deers. Only the doe-eyed do gopis of Vrindavan can relish this according to their level of qualification. This prem, Krishna can relish the prem of the gopis of Vrindavan. Only Krishna can. But Krishna's love, Krishna's, the prem that Krishna has, it, the prem of the gopis gives Krishna unlimited bliss and Krishna's reciprocal prem might appear to be lust, but then 
lust in this world sometimes appears like praying to people who don't know. I love you forever. I can't live without you. And so many insane things that people say in this world. It's insane. I love you forever. It's nonsense. You're going to get booted out of that body. Even if you make it through to death loving someone, so-called loving. But Krishna is the, the topmost of all expert lovers. And lust doesn't attract him at all. Cannot make him happy. When a gopi says, I am afflicted by lust. I am afflicted with feelings of separation from Krishna. Bring me to Krishna. When a gopi says, who says that? Radha. Then don't think it's lust. Because she's only interested in Krishna's happiness. Krishna is an ocean of love. That's one analogy. An ocean. An ocean of love. We're close to the ocean here. Is it? No. I heard gulls this morning, so I thought we must be close to the ocean. Just see. Imperfect senses. Well, I heard properly, but I guessed wrongly. So Krishna is an ocean of love, a mine of jewel-like qualities. A mine. We, do, we don't know. We don't go to mines, but it just... Whether it's gold mine or coal mine, you just keep on going and there's more and more. How much salt is there in the salt mine? How much coal is there? It's, it just seems unlimited. He's most attractive to girls. That's why it looks like he's lusty. He has signs of lust. It could be taken like that. Deceitfulness. Ah. Uh, wrongly behaving, crookedness, but it's actually prem. Can a hundred, Krishna is so much prem, can a hundred thousand girls even trying their best satisfy Krishna? No, none of them. So, not a hundred thousand girls with, the, with lust cannot satisfy Krishna. But it's their causeless love for him that makes him interested in them. You get that? That all the lust of the world can't even interest Krishna. So why is he interested in these girls of Vrindavan? It's prem. It's something different. Of all these gopis, Krishna is most attracted to me. That's well known throughout the three worlds. Can't be false, Radharani says. He considers my love to be as great as Mount Meru and the love of all the gopis put together like a few mustard seeds. Krishna reciprocates with the love of the other gopis. He enjoys with them accordingly. And that's not wrong of him. But if a gopi mistreats Krishna and makes him unhappy, then I become sad. If Krishna doesn't show up at the meeting place, the, the rendezvous where there's... Okay, meet me there at night. Okay, so Radha goes, Krishna doesn't go. Then I think there must have been something which held him up. His mind is fixed on me only, but it may be some other gopi met him on the way and took him away and he feels obliged after all, he does say in Bhagavad Gita, Ye yata mang prapadyante tangs tataiva bhajami aham. I'm adding a little here. I reciprocate with everyone. So he won't be happy. I, actually, I have to go and see Radha, but he gets waylaid by another gopi. So he goes with her, but Although he's enjoying with her, in his heart he's feeling a fire of separation of misery the whole night. Then I become sad. Then I cry. I cry out, Krishna has not come. My 
My mind, my body, my dress, my ornaments are all useless. You've seen that. Radharani says to the false goddess. Then Krishna comes to me humbly in the morning. I angrily tell him, go back and enjoy that other girl. But that's also for his pleasure. That is the way of love in Vrindavan. Aher eva gataya premna. Aher eva gataya premna. The, the, the way of love is like a snake crawling. So it goes, it's crooked. And it's not, it's not uh, even uh, standardized crooked. Like, like if you see a diagram of a light wave, it's standardized. But it, it, it snakes it goes a little bit this way, a little bit that way, and then his body is like that. <clears throat> I show my own feelings by saying, Oh, cheetah, why did you leave me to go to another girl? And Krishna, he's caught, he, what can he say? The signs of his having enjoyed love with another girl are all over his body. So he admits. As long, therefore I am telling you, O Saki, as long as the light of Prem does not shine through the face, it will shine steadily in the abodes of both the lovers' hearts. So it may seem that Krishna is rejecting Radha or Radha is rejecting Krishna, but that that it may not be seen, but it's burning in the heart, the, the love of them for each other. If it's brought outside, then it won't be appreciated. It won't be properly seen or understood. It will vanish or become dim. The, the, the fire, the candle of Prem, has a tremendous light, luster, <clears throat> it comes through the windows of the eyes. The face is the index of the mind, especially the eyes. So, who can understand, can see in the eyes. <clears throat> and then it illuminates the cheeks, lip, lips, forehead and chest. This preem shines in the face of Krishna, but is never satisfied. And it's never under, it's often not understood even because he covers his face with a curtain of lies so that it looks like lust. She's speaking to Krishna who's got his face covered. You cover the face out of shyness or it can be to hide your emotions also. So Krishna was pretending to be shy by covering his face. But he was covering his emotions as he heard this stream of nectar cheating Radha into revealing her heart, which she'd never say to Krishna. When one lover is angry with him, Krishna will say, oh my dearest, you're the most dear to me. I love you the most. I can't even in my dreams think of letting another girl into my heart. But when that girl rem remains angry with him, seeing the love signs of another girl on him, he comes to me and tells me. You see, so here we have Krishna. Radha is saying that Krishna is enjoying one girl and another girl was expecting him to come to her. So another girl is angry with Krishna because Krishna went to another girl. And then Krishna comes to Radha to sort it all out. And then he comes to me. But when he comes to me, he sees me. Then he wants to enjoy with me. As if he's overwhelmed with lust. He doesn't show his praying by saying, I love you. You are my life. But when a gopi is burning in the fire of separation and the ocean of her patience is reduced by her engagement, eagerness to meet him, it's reduced 
just to the whole ocean is reduced to a spoonful. She reveals her prem by singing verses like this. And then what do you may say? Gopi Geet. But this is not from Gopi Geet. The verse I'm going to say. It's from just after Gopi Geet. We often recite it along with the Gopi Geet. It's in the first verse. Yate sujata charnam buru hung stareshu, he tash and I pray that he ma he car kasheshu. Tenar teving at a sitadvia tate, a king svit, kurpadi be a brahmati dear, bavad ayusham naha. The gopis collectively say, O oh dearly beloved, Priya, your lotus feet are so soft that we place them gently on our breasts, fearing that your feet will be hurt. Our life, our life rests only in you. Our minds, therefore, are filled with anxiety that your tender feet might be wounded by pebbles as you roam about on the forest path. In this way, the gopi clearly expresses her unmotivated love for Krishna. Although the life heirs are unable to penetrate the deep darkness of this great separation, the lamp of Prem shines brightly in it because it is nourished by the oil of great affection. The Rasa Shastra, this the, the topics which are discussed in relation to uh, love that is full of these kind of analogies. It's ornamental language. The analogies help to bring out the points. You're right, Radha says to the goddess. After abandoning the gopis in the rasa dance, he left me also. He left all of them to be with me alone. Radha goes and Krishna goes looking for her. Then he goes with her. Then he leaves her. Why? I'll tell you, Radha says. I'll tell you why he did this. He is an ocean. He is the prince of Raja, an ocean of divine love. And he considers, to me, he considers me to be the best of all his lovers, the greatest of all his lovers. I can never take offense at his behavior. He seated me on a divine throne of matchless good fortune and adorned me with many kinds of jewel-like pastimes. Wandering from one forest to another with me and enjoying loving pastimes with me without even thinking of any other gopi. Then I thought to myself, my girlfriends cannot see this great nectar ocean of bliss. Where are they now afflicted by separation? What shall I do? So Radha, in the midst of her greatest happiness, is thinking of her friend that they should also be happy. They're, they're in separation from Krishna. What about them? So Radha thought, if we were just to wait here for a moment, the Sakis who are wandering here and there, wandering here and there, looking for us in great anxiety, if we just wait here, we just stay here for a little time, they'll find us. So thinking like this, I said to Krishna, oh my dearest, I can't go any further. And we sat down. Then Krishna, who is the crown jewel of clever pranksters, the foremost relisher of transcendental mellows, he knew what was on my mind and he thought to himself, if I wander through the forest with Srimati Radharani, there will be no happiness. All the gopis will become sad. And if we both wait for them here, they will find us and chastise us for leaving them then all our leelas will stop for the night and the gopis will go home and there'll be no rasa dance. Therefore he left me, Radharani is explaining. So the gopis would blame him instead of me. See, Radha took him away. They're angry with Radha. But when, he, when they find that he's abandoned her also, then they'll blame me and they'll love me, Radha, more. He thought, 
they will be immersed in an ocean of astonishment after seeing her matchless fever of separation from me. Their pride of love for me will be diminished when they see that Radha is billions of times better than all of them because of her feelings of separation from Krishna. Both in union and separation, her love is so much more. So they, then they will appreciate. He thought, they, the gopis, may think that I am lusty and that is why I left them to play with Radha. Although their love for me is much greater than hers. That's what they think. They may accuse both of us like this, but when they are burned by the flames of separation from me, burning in their heart, no, the flames, they will be burned by the flames from the heart of Radha's separation from Krishna. As they come closer to her, then they will understand that the flames of Radha's love are much more than the insignificant fires of their love. Now, the gopis' love for Krishna is not insignificant. But it is in comparison with that for Krishna, of, of, of Radha for Krishna. Krishna thought, I want them all to unite in this, and in this way my desire will be fulfilled. At the same time, they will not be jealous when I later dance in the middle of the circle of the rasa dance with Radha as the central gopi. Just as one is helped ultimately by an ointment, you put on your eye and it burns. But gradually you find the burning recedes, the burning sensation recedes and the eye is healed. So similarly, Sometimes a friend has to give pain to a friend in order to help him. Goddess, Krishna thought like this, carried me for a while, and then said, just wait here for a moment, put me down in a soft place, and left. Then he became upset, seeing how upset I was. And he was just going to come back to console me when all my girlfriends found me. And then he saw, just like you are watching us, I was watching, uh, just, as he, just as you were watching us, so Krishna was watching me with my girlfriend gopis in my mood of intense separation from Krishna. Krishna didn't do anything wrong. He killed the demons, they were demons, Arishtasura, Bakasura, Agasura, Batsasura, Putana. They were killed by the power of Vishnu, who appeared in him to protect the devotees. Krishna's transcendental feats, killing the demons, lifting Govardhan Hill, they prove Gagamuni's words correct. Garga told Nanda Maharaj that Krishna is equal to Narayan in qualities. But, O oh Goddess, Lord Narayana cannot equal Krishna either in his form, beauty, in his qualities and his sweetness. That's what I understand from the words of Garga, who is the best of rishis. In other words, Radharani, when she heard that Krishna, Garga has said that Krishna is will be equal to Narayana. So Radha heard that and said, yeah, Krishna shows that. Uh, but he also shows how uh, Narayana cannot be equal to him. If A equals B, B equals A. Right? Uh, Krishna equals Narayana, but Narayana doesn't equal Krishna. Transcendental arithmetic lesson. Hearing these beautiful words of Radha, Krishna very eagerly said, I know that you are the only repository of prem, of the kind of prem that you have described. Oh, my dear friend, the essence of your nectarian talks about prem makes it seem like the lover's faults are qualities. 
it makes the misery that the lover gives seem like the beloved taste of lecter. It's it makes one ev- unable to tolerate even the slightest misery that the lover may feel. It makes you unable to give up your body even though the prem burns so much. It makes the lover seem glorious even though he's not glorious. That is prem, Radha. And you are the only shelter of that prem just as I heard in Parvati's assembly. But I tell you, my dear friend, Krishna is saying to Radha, he doesn't love you the way you love him. I can see that very clearly from his activities. Therefore, my heart burns when I see your heart burning in the fire of misery. How can we believe your explanation of why he left the Rasada? He left you. We didn't hear it from him. He's the one who speaks Bhagavad Gita. Right, he's what, it, what he says, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha, that's authoritative. We didn't hear him say it. We didn't hear any of his friends say it. We didn't hear any Acharya say it. Madhvacharya didn't say it. Vishnu Swami didn't say it. Vallabhacharya didn't say it. And if you thought about his coward boyfriends, then when did they ever speak the truth? Yeah, they may have said it. No, actually, the coward boy friends may say, well, Krishna left because of this. They may give some explanation, but you can't trust them. They, they, they tell lies. It's just, you know, it's, they do it all the time. They're Matura people, after all. Radharani said, Saki, I know directly, exactly, immediately what is on my lover's mind. Then the goddess replies, Oh Radha, how can you know? Have you studied the Achuta Yoga Shastra so that you can know how to enter into other people's bodies? She's saying sarcastically. She he is saying sarcastically. Radha said, You're a goddess, so you're always eager for such things like learning Achuta Yoga. I'm a human being, how can I be like you? I can't know all this yoga. I don't know about yoga. If you think you can believe me, I will tell you how I can know what is in my lover's mind. Otherwise, why should I waste my words? The goddess said, Oh, my dear Radha, if you can logically convince me, then why shouldn't I believe you? Your lover may be an ocean of good qualities, but I don't believe that he actually loves you at all. Radha said, you're an expert in joking. You must be joking. When you call someone who does not know the mind of her beloved a seer who is able to enter someone else's body or mind. In other words, you you think that I don't know the mind of my beloved and you're, you're joking when you say that, oh, so you can enter, you can enter someone's body. The goddess said, I, Radha, I'm sorry that you can't see Krishna, although you claim to know his mind. Why do you cry loudly? Radha said, okay, what you're saying is okay. You speak the truth, but listen. At that time, I did not have this intuitive feeling. I was just crying from separation from Krishna. Krishna then said, Gandharavike, uh, speaking to her, Gandharavika, she who is expert in all arts, including the art of love. I don't argue whether you know his mind or not, but the question is, if he knows yours, Radha said, he knows my mind. Of course he does. Why do you you ask? There's a secret about this. I will tell you because you are controlling me with your love. Who can control Radha with love? She's not thinking logically now. If she was thinking logically, she would think, who can control me with love? So she doesn't think. It's Yogamaya at work. 
Krishna said, Radhe, I asked you this boldly because I am overwhelmed with love for you. You should tell me exactly because I want to hear it. Don't hide anything. Radha said. We, Krishna and I, know what is in each other's minds and we always dwell in each other's heart. This is not in imagination. We are actually one soul we can never be split into. Radha, Krishna, Pranaya, Vikriti, Hiladine, Shakti, Rasmad, Ekat, Manav. They're one soul. We learn it at the beginning of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Ekat, Manav, Api, Bhuvi, Pura, Deha, Bhedam, Gatau, Tau. But they've become two to enjoy the, the Pranaya, Vikriti, transformations of love under the Hladini Shakti, the pleasure potency. We are one soul full of deep rasa with a golden and bluish form like two lotus flowers, one golden and the other blue in one lake. As a oil lamp, this, the, you have the oil and then there, if there are two wicks, they, they destroy darkness on both sides. We destroy the darkness of our, of our nearby girlfriends with, with our two bodies, although we are one soul. When the wind of separation seems to blow out the lamp of our love, our expert girlfriends carefully protect it and give it new life by arranging for us to meet each other. So there, there, there you have the, the role of the gopis. The, 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 the lights of the, the deepam, the light you have to see. There's enough oil, the, the, the wick is clean, then it will go on burning. So in the same way, the gopis, Radha feels the gopis are uh, they're helping us to keep our love alive. They facilitate our meeting each other. O oh, auspicious girl, Radha says to the goddess, remove the darkness of your doubts by opening the box of my heart and looking at the secret jewels of love within it. Hold them in your heart and never show them to anyone. It's not supposed to be. It's the precious, Radha's precious jewels, which are only meant for Krishna. Mm. So it's a very secret thing. Chaitanyakam, what is that? Chaitanyakam, Prakarta, Adhuna, Yadvayam, Chaikyam Aptam, Radha Bhava Duti Suvalitam, Naomi Krishna Swarupa. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radha Krishna combined again uh, to uh, Krishna's understanding now from Radha, but he can't taste it. So he has to come as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that love, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wants to taste it and he wants to say to the whole world, what is that? I'll come back to that later. Remind me if I forget. O Saki, yes, this is the situation. So Krishna said, I've carefully considered Everything you just told me. And now in my mind is, is arising a desire to test if what you say is true. It's very nice. Very nice explanation. But now I want to test if it is true. You say that you and Krishna are one, but you are here. Where is he? Where is your lover? Is he at home? Is he tending in the, the cows in the forest? You can't make me believe that you and Krishna are one unless you allow me to test it. Oh, fa fair-faced girl, I will firmly believe everything you say when you can show me that you are thinking of the same thing as him at the same time. Is your lover close by or far away? 
quickly, you think about this, and I will gladly believe that you are one soul with two bodies. I won't lose faith in you if by chance you cannot meet because you are withheld by your superiors or some demon comes or any other reason. You may, be, Even though you're thinking of each other, although you, are locked, you may be locked in your house, you can't call your lover t- to you, you can't go out to meet him, you can't bring him to you, but I am asking you, Oh, restless eyes girl. I want you, by the power of your remembrance of him, <laughs> to bring him here now on my request. <laughs> You're called Krishna Priya. We'd be very happy if he could come. It's a good chance now because. Your superiors are not here. They're outside. So, remove the misery arising from my doubts without any fear. And by your love, call Krishna. Then I'll believe everything you've told me. The daughter of Maharaj Vishapani said, Oh, Saki, don't make fun of me. If I cannot do what you want, my prem will be put to shame by my great pain. So what do you do when you want something intensely? What does a devotee do? They pray to Krishna. Or they may pray to some demigod, they're worshipping different demigods. So Radha worships Surya Dev. So she prays to Surya Dev. Oh, you who are praised by the demigods, oh, effulgent one, O oh, my Ishta Deva, my chosen deity, the sun god, you gladden the three, she's saying Gayatri Mantra, you who gladdens the three worlds with his audience, O oh, fulfiller of all desires, O oh, merciful one, O oh, lord of the lotus flowers that open when the sun comes up, O oh, witness of all truths and falsehoods, if Gandharvika and Giridhari are one soul, then let Giridhari now appear before me to please my girlfriends. And Radharani closed her eyes <laughs> in meditation on Krishna. Like a yogini sitting there. So Krishna quickly gave up his female disguise. The gopis... <gasps> And then he came up and started to kiss and embrace. Radha! And all the symptoms of ecstasy, her body erupted in bliss, goose pimples. In her meditation she saw him and then she felt him embracing her. And she opened her eyes and he's there. She washed the mascara from her eyes, the kajal with her ecstatic tears. Then after some time, when she was able to gather her wits, Radha covered her face with her veil, while Lalita said to Krishna, Oh, it's it's just amazing, you came here, how did you get here so quickly? We didn't see you come. This is the inner chamber, it's only, only the women can come in here. Even the wind can't enter if we tell him not to. Any man who can enter this chamber is is pretty bold. It's not only hard to enter just because of the architecture, but Radha is protected by all her friends like me. All the chaste women purify themselves by bathing in the Ganga of Radharani's fame. But you are shameless She's so chaste and you are so shameless. She sat down to meditate on Surya Dev, which is before you do the puja, you have to meditate on the deity. She took her bath, she sat down for meditation, and now you've come and embraced her and contaminated her so she can't do the puja. Aren't you afraid of the sun god? Have you given up all shame, all social etiquette? You're lucky because 
Jartila and Abhimanyu are not at home today and we're all just weak girls. What can we do? You're lucky. Lucky for you. You're just a big uh, womanizer. Krishna it's not my fault. I was just playing in the, in the, in the cow shed. You know, I'm a coward boy. And I remembered Radha and then this goddess brought me here. <laughs> Radha said, oh, 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 yeah, the god. Lalita, what happened to that goddess? I have to see her to believe her. What's going on? This Radha is just something. This seems like one of Krishna's tricks. <laughs> the Lalita said, The goddess became completely satisfied and free from all distress when she saw you meeting with Krishna. Now she shines in this room. What does that mean? And we have all become very happy. Krishna said, Show me that goddess. But Lalita remained silent. Krishna then said, Ah, now I understand. You are shameless. You're calling me shameless. But you, you call some Siddha Yogini or some goddess and you took a mantra from her by which you want, you've brought me to, into your home and you want to control me and make me your slave. Radha, I also want to take a mantra from that goddess. Help me to get the same mantra that you got. I take shelter of you. Take me to a lonely place and make me your disciple. Because you have to say the mantra secretly. So, Radha said, Your flute already knows that art of enchantment by which you take the chaste housewives. You call them. You know that art. You're saying that I'm calling you. But you know your flute has this mantra by which you call all the women and break all their vows of chastity. And Krishna said, but then you sometimes steal my flute and then what will happen to me? With, even through my flute I can't have my desires fulfilled. Lalita said, because she's a very chaste woman, this goddess, when she saw you, she's hiding secretly. Without, so how can she give you the mantra? If you are eager to get it, then go inside the secret chamber yourself. If she's kind, she'll fulfill your desires. Uh, after hearing this, Krishna entered into the inner apartment of the inner apartment. And Radha said, Lalita, what's going on? I'm afraid. Lalita said, what are you afraid of? Come on, we'll all go with you and... We'll all go to see together that goddess hiding in the inside room. The seeds of Krishna's words were thus planted in Radha's field-like heart and sprinkled with the nectar stream of jokes of the cloud-like sakis, calling a stream, causing a stream of arguments to sprout that bore the juicy fruit of true conclusions. In other words... By joking backwards and forwards, Lalita and Krishna revealed to Radha what had actually happened. Then Lalita said, Saki, she's speaking to Radha, the goddess has disappeared. Where has she gone? We're going to look for her. You, Krishna, everyone knows he's your beloved. So you give the mantra to him. We'll leave you alone with him. At that time, Radha and Krishna decorated each other with many jewels from their love box, thus defeating the luster of millions of cupids. Even if the great saints could defeat Cupid by always hearing, glorifying and remembering such loving transcendental person. Yeah, even... even Someone is a great saintly person, but they can defeat Cupid by hearing about the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Uh, anyone who faithfully hears or describes this past this pastime of the Supreme Lord with the gopis of Raja attains supreme devotion to Krishna and quickly becomes free from the heart's disease of lust, becoming fixed in Krishna consciousness. This Prema Samput, the name of this book, was compiled 
by someone. He doesn't give his name. It's Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. It was compiled by someone on the bank of Radha Kund and Shamakund, sitting between them. In the month of Falgun, 1606 Shaka era. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes to, he's heard from Radha. Technically he may understand, but to taste that bliss, he comes for a very short time with Radha Bhava Duti Suvalitam, imbued with the feelings and the bodily complexion of Radha. He comes for a very short time, even within his pastimes. It's not until the end that he really deeply becomes absorbed in that. But he wants to tell others also. If Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had not come, Basugosh, the songwriter says, what would have happened? How could we have lived? How could we have maintained our bodies? Uh, why? Because the glories of Radha, which is the ultimate limit, there is no limit, but if there is any limit of Premaras, that is in Radha. So he came to announce her glories <coughs> the, of the uh, groves of Vrindavan, the abode of sweetness. <coughs> Who can enter in there? Uh, the gopis, they enter by the power of their love. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is Krishna who is so charmed by Radha that he wants to taste the love she feels for Krishna. And he wants others to know about this. But it's a very secret topic, kept in a very secret box which the Panchatattva have come to distribute by distributing the holy name Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we should hear also if we, we hear Shravan Manan Nidhi Dhyasana. Hear, contemplate, try to understand, make it one with our heart. But ultimately it has to be some mercy. Mercy comes down. That's why we have to bow down and pray for the mercy to pour over us. People pray to God for so many things. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu prayed to uh, that we can drown. He prayed that, uh, he taught us how to pray. I pray that I may drown in the ocean of love. I, everyone is praying, make me happy. We're praying to go to a land where the unhappiness is so intense. We're, uh, we're praying to a foolish village woman who is so foolish that her lover rejects her, kicks her, still she loves. This is madness. Is it not madness? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu prays to become mad and to benedict us all with madness. This is the ultimate teaching of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In Calcutta one time, two devotees were arguing. Who is greater, Krishna or Radha? They both had their, sorry, Krishna or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now I gave it away. 
Uh, who is greater, Krishna or Chaitanya? No, Krishna is greatest because Chaitanya, Mah the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is searching after Krishna. No, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is great. He's more merciful. So the argument went on. They came to Srila Prabhupada. Who is the greatest? Srila Prabhupada said, Who is the greatest? Krishna or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Radha is the greatest. Because to understand her, Krishna becomes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is Radhashtami. If you distribute those books, you go through the whole Srimad Bhagavatam, you won't find the name of Radha at all. That's why we have to have Bhagavatam with commentary. And if we read Bhagavatam with commentary, then we'll find Radha in every syllable. If we actually chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna <laughs>